कुंज बिहारे जय राधा माधव राधा माधव राधे प्रभु बार प्रभु बार प्रभु बार जय जय प्रभु जय जय प्रभु बार प्रभु बार प्रभु बार जय जय प्रभु बार प्रभुपाद की अनंत कोटि वैष्णव वृंद की निताई गौर प्रेमानंदे हरे कृष्ण Thank you very much, dear devotees, for kindly being present here today. I am thankful to each and every one of you for kindly being here and kindly giving your valuable time to listening to what I have to say on Srimad Bhagavatam, third canto, twenty-second chapter, verse number thirty-five. Dear devotees, it is Shishta Parampara. tradition established by the great acharyas to begin with mangala charan auspicious invocations so i'll begin with auspicious invocations mangala charan and then we'll look into the verse and purport most of us know these verses you can kindly sing along with me om gyan timirandhasya gyananjana shalakaya चक्षुन्मीलिम तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्ट स्थापित ये नूतले सोयं रूप कदाम ददाती स्वदाक वंदेह श्रीगुरश्रीयुतपदकमल श्रीगुरून वैष्णवांश श्रीपाग्रजात सह गण रघुनाथन्वित तम सजीव साइत सवधूत पिजन सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधाकृष्णपाद सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखान्वता नमो विष्णुपादा कृष्ण प्रेषा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदांत स्वामीनामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे नमो महावदान्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदायते कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नाम्ने गौरत्षे नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशाकुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतिताभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गाधर श्रीवासादिगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 शुल प्रभुपात की अनंतकोटि वैष्णवृंद की गौर प्रेमानंद सो वंस अगेन डियर बॉडीज थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर काइंडली बीइंग प्रेजेंट हियर टुडे इट इज वैष्णव कल्चर 
to give thanks to the audience shri rupa goswami prabhupad never began a single literature without giving thanks to his audience it is vaishnav culture to give thanks to the audience because the speakers are rendered useless without the audience all speakers are looking for like minded audience and today all of you are present here as the like minded audience i am thankful to each and every one of you thank you for kindly being present here today thank you swavas prabhu for kindly organizing all the events in the temple kindly organizing the community in such a nice way thank you to all the senior devotees of shila prabhupad who are present here thank you to my dear friend shama chandra prabhu for kindly organizing an invitation here and thank you to my dear friend param karuna prabhu and his good wife damodar lila mata ji for being here with me dear devotees we are reading from shrimad bhagavatam third canto 22nd chapter verse number 35 the verse is in front of you i'll read kindly repeat after me ayat yamas tasya san yama swantara yapana शृण्वतो ध्यायतो विष्णो कुरवतो ब्रुवत कथा सिननिम्स अयातयामा टाइम नेवर लॉस्ट तस्य ऑफ मनु आसन वर यामा द आवर्स स्व अंतर his duration of life yapana bringing to an end shranvata hearing dhyayata contemplating vishnu of lord vishnu kurvata acting bruvata speaking katha the topics translation and purport by his divine grace abhay charanaravind bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupad shila prabhupad ki jai translation consequently although his duration of life gradually came to an end his long life consisting of a manvantara era was not spent in vain since he ever engaged in hearing contemplating writing down and chanting the past times of the lord purport as freshly prepared food is very tasteful but if kept for 3 or 4 hours becomes stale and tasteless so the existence of material enjoyment can endure as long as life is fresh but at the fag end of life everything becomes tasteless and everything appears to be vain and painful The life of Emperor Swayamvuva Manu, however, was not tasteless. As he grew older, his life remained as fresh as in the beginning, because of his continued Krishna consciousness. The life of a man in Krishna consciousness is always fresh. It is said that the sun rises in the morning and sets in the evening, and its business is to reduce the duration of everyone's life. but the sunrise and sunset cannot diminish the life of one who engages in krishna consciousness swayambhuva manu's life did not become stale after some time for he engaged himself always in chanting about and meditating upon lord vishnu he was the greatest yogi because he never wasted his time it is especially mentioned here vishnu kurvato bruvata katha when he talked he talked only of krishna and vishnu the personality of godhead when he heard something it was about krishna when he meditated it was upon krishna and his activities it is stated that his life was very long 71 yugas one yuga is completed in 4 million 4 lakh 32000 4 million 43 lakh 20000 years 71 of such yugas is the duration of the life of a manu and 14 such manus come and go in one day of brahma for the entire duration of his life 43 lakh 20000 years into 71 years manu engaged in krishna consciousness by chanting hearing talking about and meditating upon krishna therefore his life was not wasted nor did it become stale 
जगत गुरु शिल प्रभुपात की जय मुखम करोती वाचल पंगुम लंगय ते गिरी यद कृपा तम हम वंदे श्री गुरु दीन तारण सो डियर डिवोटीज द करंट चैप्टर इन द श्रीमद भागवतम थर्ड कैंटो इज अबाउट द लाइफ ऑफ स्वयंभुव मनु आफ्टर द मैरिज ऑफ हिज डॉटर देवहूति सो देवहूति वॉज हिज डियर डॉटर एंड आफ्टर देवहूति ही सिलेक्टेड द चॉइसेस्ट हजबेंड इन द फॉर्म ऑफ करदम मुनि स्वयंभुव मनु अरेज फॉर अ ग्रैंड वेडिंग फॉर हिज डॉटर एंड आफ्टर द वेडिंग टूक प्लेस स्वयंभुव मनु फेल्ट दैट ही हैड फुलफिल्ड हिज रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटीज ऑफ हाउस होल्डर लाइफ स्वयंभुव मनु स्टेड इन हिज हाउस होल्डर लाइफ फॉर द रेस्ट ऑफ हिज लाइफ बट वाइल स्टेइंग इन हाउस होल्डर लाइफ ही एंगेज इन कॉन्स्टेंट हियरिंग मेडिटेशन चैंटिंग ऑफ कृष्णाज नेम फॉर्म क्वालिटीज एंड पास टाइम्स दिस इज हाउ ही पास हिज लाइफ शिल प्रभुपाद सेज एंड ही कमेंट्स अपॉन द टर्म यात याम दिस इज द यू कैन सी अयात याम अयात याम मीन्स टाइम नेवर लॉस्ट इन द भगवदगीता द टर्म द ऑपोजिट टर्म यात याम इज यूज यात याम इज यूज फॉर फूड दैट हैज बिकम स्टेल इन द भगवदगीता कृष्ण सेज दैट फूड दैट हैज बीन कुकड एंड केप्ट लाइक दैट फॉर थ्री आवर्स हैज बिकम यात याम हैज बिकम स्टेल हियर द टर्म यूज इज अयात याम नेवर बिकेम स्टेल स्वयंभुव मनुज लाइफ नेवर बिकेम स्टेल इवन दो टाइम वॉज पासिंग बिकॉज ही हैड समथिंग वेरी ब्यूटिफुल टू डू इन हिज लाइफ एंड डेर फोर ही डिड नॉट सफर फ्रॉम एनी ऑफ द क्राइसिस that many individuals suffer from as they are progressing in their age one of the crises is that because death is fast approaching many people are unable to understand what to do in life and because of being clueless in life therefore they sink further and further into depression swayambhuva manu did not have any of these issues because swayambhuva manu had attained what is the ultimate purpose of the human form of life dear devotees in this world it is a standard rule that everything must get degraded and become stale no matter how beautiful it appears to us in the beginning in the vedic literature named nirukta and shila prabhupada used to say that nirukta is the standard vedic dictionary nirukta describes that every material object has to undergo six compulsory transformations nirukta is by the vedic sage named yaska and in nirukta yaska says that there are six transformations that everything in this material world has to undergo i will list these six transformations i will give the technical names please repeat the names after me the first transformation of the material world please say jayate jayate so jayate means everything in this world first and foremost has to take birth dear devotees everything has to come into existence this is the first transformation of the material world in the spiritual world this transformation does not exist because in the spiritual world nothing takes birth everything is present eternally this is the first transformation and first defect of the material world jayate everything has to take birth for example this small piece of paper it has been produced at a certain point of time so it has already undergone the first transformation which is jayate it has come into existence it has taken birth second please repeat after me asti so it doesn't get immediately destroyed it stays like this for some time this is the second transformation of the material world it has to stay like this at least for a moment third vardhate it increases in size so this piece of paper may not appear to increase in size but if you see through a microscope there are many particles of dust settling upon it 
gradually its volume is increasing dear devotees this is the third transformation that takes place with every material object in the world vardhate fourth vi parinamate it gets transformed yes so it transforms yeah it transforms it 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 yeah it it gets transformed the actual meaning is it gets transformed okay so you will see after some time some discoloration takes place the color changes the shape starts changing so it is called viparinamate viparinam transformation fifth apakshiyate it starts to dwindle so gradually you will see that it is dwindling and finally the last transformation is nashyati it gets destroyed so these are the six compulsory transformations of any object in the material world and this is specified by yaska muni in his nirukta now please try to think of any object in the material world which is free of these six transformations soul is not a product of the material world is there any object in the material world which does not undergo these six transformations atom atom even the atom is destroyed at the very end and it is transformed into back into primordial material energy yes ya parmanu yes holy name is not a product of the material world nice yes prabhu what about somebody who specifically born and then they immediately die still the transformation these six transformations take place very rapidly for them although these six are there but they happen in a very short span of time for them although it is unnoticeable to the human eye but still every moment the body is changing and so even if somebody dies in a few moments these transformations have already taken place to a smaller degree within them so these are <coughs> unavoidable in the material world that is why life also gradually starts to dwindle and we start losing interest in all the good things that we once used to enjoy in life the famous philosopher bhartri hari sanskrit poet he says bhogana bhukta vayameva bhukta kalo na yato vayameva yata bhogana bhukta we did not enjoy sense objects these sense objects ended up enjoying us we did not enjoy the sense objects the sense objects ended up enjoying me kalo na yato i was thinking that i am passing time but no it was time who passed me time is as it is but it was time who passed me so in this way dear devotees gradually we start feeling disgusted with life as and when old age approaches but there is one way of getting rid of this feeling of disgust and living a happy life till the very end of life and beyond one's life that is why taking complete pleasure in the name form qualities and pastimes of bhagwan this topic is repeated so often that we should take pleasure in krishna consciousness we should take pleasure in krishna consciousness sometimes it is repeated so much that some of us may start thinking what is the actual process of you know deriving taste from activities of krishna consciousness dear devotees the process begins through hearing properly and therefore in the very third canto kapil muni is going to specify what is the exact process of deriving taste in krishna consciousness dear devotees if we are not able to experience taste ourselves it means the process hasn't worked for us 
therefore it is very important that the process should work for us and how will it work for us kapil muni specifies in third canto 25th chapter 25th verse kindly repeat after me satam prasangan mama virya samvido भवंति हृत्कर्णरसायना कथा तज्जोषणादाश्वपवर्गवर्तमनी श्रद्धारतिर्भक्तिरनुक्रमिष्यति सो कपिल मुनि गिव्स अ वेरी सिंपल फॉर्म्यूला व्हिच ऑफन वी फेल टू फॉलो डियर डिबोटीज Satam Prasangan Kapil Muni says first and foremost find somebody who is Sat Sat means somebody who is a sadhu who has already achieved the other end of Krishna Bhakti what is the other what is at the other end of Krishna Bhakti that is Krishna Prema a sadhu who has already achieved this dear devotees because often we are not able to find such a sadhu therefore we are not able to derive the full benefit of the process of krishna bhakti the process of krishna bhakti is a living process it means that the process is capable of producing pure devotees at each and every moment in each and every generation krishna consciousness is not a stale process that it stops producing pure devotees after a certain point of time krishna consciousness has the capability to produce pure devotees at any point of time and therefore pure devotees are available at all points of time satam prasangan find a pure devotee prasanga and closely associate with such a pure devotee and what should you do what is the meaning of close association mama virya samvido samvit my powerful katha kapil muni says here katha which is very powerful dear devotees shila bhakti siddhan saraswati thakur used to say we should meet the unconventional teacher of religiosity in our lives the unconventional teacher of religiosity why what did he mean by the term unconventional teacher because there are many conventional teachers in the world what do conventional teachers do they complete the syllabus that is given in the college that is what you call a conventional teacher a syllabus has been given they come they teach in the class and they say all right is everything okay they don't bother about whether the student has advanced or not that is what you call a conventional teacher an unconventional teacher goes often against the convention and make sure that the student learns Uh, until the student learns the unconventional teacher will not be happy that is what you call an unconventional teacher and when an unconventional teacher arrives in one's life one's life is revolutionized to the point that one starts understanding what is the actual process of krishna bhakti and how it works till that point of time it remains only a theory that you know you follow the process you become a pure devotee you follow the process you become a pure devotee but how it is demonstrated by an unconventional teacher of religiosity the devotee sri chaitanya mahaprabhu was one such teacher when chaitanya mahaprabhu met raghunath das goswami for the first time raghunath das goswami wanted to immediately give up home and wanted to join chaitanya mahaprabhu chaitanya mahaprabhu told him usually most conventional teachers would tell him very nice you are you want to get detached from householder life very nice go get detached leave your home and join me chaitanya mahaprabhu is an unconventional teacher he told raghunath das goswami don't act like a crazy person for the time being enjoy the material world in a befitting way but do not get attached to it later i will personally arrange for you to join me and become fully detached this dear devotees is an unconventional teacher and in the association of an unconventional teacher katha the second line the end says katha here powerful narrations of shri krishna dear devotees in the shrimad bhagavatam there are many narrations of shri krishna given but often you need a devotee in order to enhance the flavor of krishna katha therefore 
you need somebody who can make a rasayan the second line says rasayan what is the meaning of rasayan rasayan refers to an ayurvedic tonic an ayurvedic tonic which is sweet yet which is very potent so you need a devotee who can give you hrit karna rasayana hrit means heart karna means ear rasayana a tonic for the heart and the ear your heart should feel joyous when you hear katha from such an individual and the joshanad once you start relishing that the devotees how should katha be relished katha should be relished like a cow relishes its food how many of us have seen a cow eat grass yes a cow does not immediately eat grass you know it does not immediately consume it first chews it and keeps it near its there is a special place cavity here and then it again takes it out and again chews upon it gradually slowly slowly so a cow actually chews its food not once but twice and that process dear devotees is the process of relishing katha first you understand what krishna did and then with the help of the various vaishnav acharyas and the commentaries and the devotees try to relish each and every aspect of krishna leela then when one has become seasoned and cultured in the relishment of krishna katha apavarga vartmani then you start walking on the path of spiritual life then gradually you will get three things shraddha firm faith rati that is direct experience of taste and bhakti finally we will get prema love of godhead anukramishyati this is the process of finally getting to the other end of krishna bhakti raupar translates in the association of pure devotees discussion of the past times and activities of the supreme personality of god it is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart the devotee is very important to understand we cannot just make a mechanical statement yes this was very pleasing to me we need to have that direct experience that krishna katha is pleasing to our ear and our heart as long as krishna katha is not pleasing to our ear and heart how can we say that it is appealing to us therefore propat says by cultivating such knowledge one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation thereafter he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed then real devotion and devotional service begin this dear devotees the direct experience of taste is the main factor of advancement for all of us but first and foremost we should be convinced that the process is going to work many times devotees who are following the path for many many years for many decades they are not convinced that the process actually works and will work for them sri jiva goswami says very clearly shraddha is not easily attained i would like to ask a question what is the meaning of shraddha dear devotees in english what is the meaning of shraddha faith wonderful my question is faith in what prabhu ji says krishna and acharya narottam prabhu says shastra <laughs> faith in science but the science is described in shastra short and sweet you are saying faith in the shastra wonderful so prabhu although it is you are what you are saying is correct faith in krishna but a person who is new cannot directly put faith in krishna because a person first needs to understand where krishna is described the devotees how many of us became devotees because of reading srila prabhupada's books first and foremost did we put faith in krishna or did we put faith in the books of shri prabhupad books therefore shri jiva goswami says shastrartha vishwas eva shraddha shraddha basically means faith in the message of the shastra that is the essential meaning of the term shraddha shraddha means to have faith in the essential message of shastra 
but it is not very easy for many people therefore every time we say swalpa punya vatam rajan vishwaso naiva jayate those who have less piety they cannot easily put faith jiva goswami in the beginning of his bhakti sandarbha says something very important dear devotees please repeat after me yavat papais tu malinam hridayam tavadevahi न शास्त्रे सत्य बुद्धि सिया सद्बुद्धि सद्गुर तथा यावत पापईस तो मलिन जीव गोस्वामी सेज एज लॉन्ग एज द हार्ट इज पल्यूटेड विथ पाप अनहोलसम डिजायर्स तावत टिल दैट पॉइंट ऑफ टाइम हृदय वन डज नॉट हैव एन इंटेलिजेंस न शास्त्रे सत्य बुद्धि सियात वन डज नॉट हैव फिक्स्ड इंटेलिजेंस इन शास्त्र मेनी पीपल पुट आर्ग्यूमेंट्स अगेंस्ट शास्त्र वाई शुड आई लिसन टू शास्त्र वाई शुड आई लिसन टू गुरु दिस इज बिकॉज जीव गोस्वामी सेज एंड प्रभुपाद यूज टू से पुअर फंड ऑफ पायटी फ्रॉम प्रीवियस लाइफ डेयर डिबोटीज डेयर फोर मेनी पीपल आर नॉट एबल टू पुट फेथ इजिली इन द मेसेज ऑफ शास्त्र एंड सद बुद्धि सदगुर था वाई शुड आई पुट फेथ इन अ बोनाफाइड गुरु so many of these doubts arise because of a lack of piety from previous lifetimes jiva goswami then further continues and says aneka janma janita punya rashi phalam mah satsang shastra shravana eva premadi jayate aneka janma after many births जनित पुण्य राशि मेनी बर्थ्स ऑफ पायटी फलम यू गेट द राइपन फ्रूट व्हाट इज द राइपन फ्रूट सत्संग यू गेट फाइनली यू गेट एक्सेस टू वन बोनाफाइड साधु शास्त्र श्रवणाद एंड इन दी एसोसिएशन ऑफ दैट बोनाफाइड साधु वी गेट टू हियर व्हाट इज प्रॉपर शास्त्र एव देन ओनली प्रेम आदि जायते वन गेट्स एक्सेस टू कृष्ण प्रेम नॉट अदरवाइज therefore dear devotees is so easy to enter into the path of bhakti so easy to enter into the path it is the easiest process of all the processes of yoga but it is so difficult to come out on the other side and attain shri krishna prem it is so difficult because most individuals do not get the proper combination of the correct attitude and the proper circumstances that are needed therefore this is what he says the fruit of acquiring piety over many lifetimes is that one is able to hear shastra in the association of genuine saintly souls and by such hearing one attains true love of god and further stages of bhakti dear devotees therefore shri krishna das kaviraj goswami also says in chaitanya charitamrit that the greater one has faith in shastra the greater one has expertise in shastra the more advanced one should be considered to be in devotional service in chaitanya charitamrita krishna das kaviraj goswami says please repeat after me shraddha vanjana hai bhakti adhikari uttam madhyam kanishta श्रद्धा अनुसारी श्रद्धावान जन अ फेथफुल डिवोटी इज भक्ति अधिकारी इज अ ट्रूली एलिजिबल कैंडिडेट फॉर लविंग सर्विस ऑफ द लॉर्ड बट श्रद्धा अनुसारी अकॉर्डिंग टू वंस फेथ फेथ इन वॉट डियर डिवोटी इज फेथ इन द शास्त्र वन इज क्लासिफाइड एज उत्तम टॉप मोस्ट डिवोटी मध्यम इंटरमीडिएट डिवोटी और कनिष्ठ इंटर इंफीरियर डिवोटी ना वॉट इज the kanishth adhikari the lowest devotee shri krishna das kaviraj goswami says please repeat yahar komal shraddha se kanishth jana yahar komal shraddha one whose faith is soft and pliable faith in shastra is very soft it can be easily broken somebody puts an opposing argument and they are immediately disturbed at heart this devotee is known as kanishth adhikari the devotees this devotee has just begun the process 
and a lot of advancement is remaining so if the faith in shastra and expertise in shastra is very low kanisht adhikari a devotee on the lowest platform second is known as madhyam adhikari please repeat after me shastra yukti nahi jane dridha shraddha va मध्यम अधिकारी से महाभाग्यवान प्रभुपत से वन हुज नॉट वेरी एक्सपर्ट इन आर्ग्यूमेंट एंड लॉजिक बेस्ड ऑन द रिवील्ड स्क्रिप्चर सी हियर इज सेइंग अबाउट स्क्रिप्चर अबाउट शास्त्र बट हैज फॉर्म फेथ इन दो स्क्रिप्चर्स इज कंसिडर्ड टू बी अ सेकेंड क्लास डिबोटी ही ऑल्सो मस्ट बी कंसिडर्ड मोस्ट फॉर्चुनेट because gradually this person is arriving at the topmost platform and what is the topmost platform dear devotees the topmost platform is as follows shastra yukte suni puna dridha shraddha yar uttam adhikari se तार संसार शास्त्र युक्त सुनी पुणे वन हु इज एक्सपर्ट इन लॉजिक आर्ग्यूमेंट एंड द रिवील स्क्रिप्चर्स एंड हु हैज फॉर्म फेथ इज इन कृष्णा इज क्लासिफाइड एज अ टॉप मोस्ट डिवोटी सच अ डिवोटी कैन डिलीवर द एंटायर वर्ल्ड डियर डिवोटीज दिस फेथ इन शास्त्र इज द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट factor of advancement of any particular individual when shrila prabhupad came from india to the west in his box in his suitcase he was carrying that particular entity on which he had the greatest faith what was he carrying in the suitcase dear devotees shrimad bhagavatam he could have carried deities with him but he was carrying the symptom of an uttam adhikari his expertise in shastra and his faith in shastra is what categorizes shrila prabhupada as a uttam adhikari yes yukti no yukti yukti so yukti is the word for logic and argument is <coughs> dear devotees unless we come to the platform of accepting krishna through shastra it will not be possible for us to make advancement on the path hearing from shastra from the mouth of a devotee who is already realized on the path dear devotees how many of us would like to have a direct experience of some taste please raise your hands right hmm? so Let's hear from the works of Sri La Rupa Goswami Prabhupada. Because Rupa Goswami is certified Uttam Adhikari devotee, and Rupa Goswami, when he composes his verses, when he composes his writings, he is composing with the sole aim of making us relish Sri Krishna Lila. So, Sri Rupa Goswami composed the literature named Padyavali. and in padyavali shri rupa goswami composed a very beautiful verse and this verse is related to shri dwarakadish here is shri dwarakadish dear devotees in front of us shri rupa goswami says something about bhagwan dwarakadish in padyavali and what he says is recorded in the padyavali i will share my screen this is verse 342 of padyavali i will sing this verse this verse is in the meter shardula vikriditam Say my shad go Swami Ashtakam. Please try to repeat after me. Tambulam swamukhard charchita mita ko me mukhe nikshipe. उन्मार्ग प्रसृत चाटु वचन को मं वशे स्थापये को मा 
नाम वशे स्थापये ए ये हित विदुर सारित भुज स्वांग के निधाया धुना विदुर सारित भुज स्वांग के निधाया धुना केली स्रस्त शिखंड कम मम पुनार व्याधुय बधना तुका Dear devotees, our Bhagawan has left for Dwarka and he had left by giving a promise to the Vrajavasis. What promise did he give to the Vrajavasis? Now I will come back. Did he follow upon his promise? No. So dear devotees, here we are in Dwarka and we are in front of Sri Sri Rukmini Dwarka Dish. Now Krishna thought, uh, I will hear the news that the Vrajavasis are suffering in separation from me and crying and I will be happy thinking that, wow, see how much I am missed by them. But Krishna forgot the fact that in love, it is not one person who has to cry. In love, how many people have to cry, dear devotees? Two people have to cry. So Sri Rupa Goswami says, the Vrajavasis were definitely crying, but more than that, somebody else was crying in Dwarka. And who was crying in Dwarka? Sri Krishna. And this is a verse where Sri Krishna in Dwaraka is crying out. One fine night, Rukmini Devi notices that the bed is wet because of his tears. She does not say anything but she starts hearing what Sri Krishna is murmuring. This is what he is murmuring in his sleep. Tambulam Swamukhardha Charvitamita Tambulam Tambul means pan. Betel nut leaf. Krishna says, who will feed me betel nut leaf? But in Dwarka there are so many betel nut leaves. Anybody can feed you. No, no, no. Swamukhardha Charvitam, that which is half chewed by Mother Yashoda. Who will feed me now? Is there anybody in Dwarka who can dare to feed the king of Dwarka their half chewed betel nut leaf? Dear devotees. There was a sweetness in that half-chewed betel nut that Mother Yashoda used to give to me. Now I lost that sweetness. Go me mukhe nikshi ped. Who will feed me this half-chewed betel nut now? Unmarga prasritam. And if I walk on an incorrect path of life today, who will give me sweet words? Chai tu vache nai. Krishna, you should not do like this. Krishna, you should never steal. Krishna, you should never give trouble to the other boys. In my childhood, Mother Yashoda used to correct me when I would make any mistake. Nowadays, if I make a mistake, people start glorifying me. You know, this is the same Acharya of the Bhagavad Gita who says in Bhagavad Gita, Yudhe Chapi Apalayanam. Akshatriya should never show his back in a war. But Krishna showed his back when he was fighting Kali Yavan. Krishna ran away from Kali Yavan. And dear devotees, when Krishna ran away from Kali Yavan, did the devotees correct him or did, did the devotees celebrate his pastime? What do they do? Yeah, because they are all members of his fan club. You know, so nobody is going to correct him now. Krishna misses this fact bitterly that nobody is there now who can correct me in my life. Eh ye hiti. And who will open her arms and call me? Ehi, ehi, come here, come here. Swanke Nidhaya, who will make me sit on her lap? And who will tie my peacock feather again when it has fallen out of place? Today I have a permanently fixed peacock feather on my crown. Where is the sweetness? Dear devotees, whose loss was greater in leaving Vrindavan? Vrajavasi's loss or Krishna's loss? Let me, yes, prove. Krishna, yes, that's a Gaudiya Vaishnava. That's a Gaudiya Vaishnava. Somebody who has the courage to say, the devotees, whose loss was greater? Krishna. Yes. Therefore, in all our temples, we will make sure that Krishna's name comes later. First, there should be Sri Radha's name, dear devotees. 
That is a Gaudiya Vaishnava. In all the temples of the world, the Vrajavasis will be celebrated first. And Krishna will love because the Vrajavasis love him. That is our mood towards Sri Krishna. So these are many sweet pastimes, dear devotees. We need to gradually start relishing the pastimes in the association of the devotees who have written such wonderful sweet pastimes for all of us. <coughs> Therefore, Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami says that a, a devotee is considered superlative or superior according to his attachment and love. The more attachment we have, the more spontaneous love we have towards Sri Krishna. That is the degree of advancement we have towards him. Gradually, what will happen is our minds will start becoming more and more absorbed in Krishna Leela. And our minds will gradually detach themselves from the events that are taking place in the material world. This is technically known as Kita Bringi Nyaya, the logic of worm and wasp. It is described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, dear devotees. Please repeat after me. Kita Pesha Skrita Rudha Kudyayam Tamanusmaran Samram Bhavaya Yogena Bindate Tatsvarupata. So, the Srimad Bhagavatam 7th canto says a worm, Kitaha, who is trapped by the wasp, Pesha Skrita, in a hole in the wall, keeps meditating repeatedly on the wasp out of envy and fear, and thus attains the form of a wasp in its next life. This is called as Kit Bringi Nyai, the logic of the worm and the wasp. The worm becomes the wasp in the next life because of intense meditation. The point to be proven is. You can attain whatever form of life you want to attain by intense meditation. Therefore, if we intensely meditate upon the name, form, qualities and pastimes of Krishna, not out of fear, but out of genuine love, then out of this very logic, Kit Bringi Nyai, by this very logic we can understand that in our next life we will be able to find ourselves in the direct association of Sri Krishna. The condition of death has been kept on Smaran. Antakale cha maam eva Smaran. If a person is able to remember me at the moment of death, that person will definitely attain Shri Krishna. But that remembrance has to be practiced thoroughly, with taste, non-mechanically, non-artificially in the human form of life. One has to take a personal interest in the life of Shri Krishna, not an official interest. Oh, because I am a member of the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, therefore, I am supposed to take interest in Sri Krishna's life. That is not the reason why I am supposed to, you know, hear Krishna Katha. Because Sri Krishna is dear to me, therefore, I will take an active interest in his life. Now, the question is, why is Sri Krishna dear to me? Why should I consider Sri Krishna dear to me? The answer to this question is the entire process of sadhana bhakti. Why should we consider Krishna as dear to ourselves? Yeah, okay, I have many other friends in my life. Huh? Why Krishna? See, the I am giving I am giving arguments from the mind side. Right? Where, where is Krishna's love when I was suffering so much in the material world? See, the mind will put forth many arguments. And then if we are unable to give a reply, then the mind will convince us. Therefore, it is very important to have a direct experience of Bhakti Ras in the association of a devotee. That is one thing which you get from Krishna that you cannot get from anything else in the world. Bhakti Ras. Krishna is Akhila Rasamrita Murti, the direct personification of all Rasa. And an experience of Bhakti Ras is something which each and every one of us should have in this particular life. That is the reason why the Jiva becomes finally attracted to Krishna. Srila Prabhupada specifies this in one of the purports. Raso Vaisaha Rasam hi eva labdhva anandi bhavati. I will, yes. 
specify this from Srila Prabhupada's purport. Prabhupada says <coughs> in Bhagavad Gita 14.27 purport, Raso vai saha rasam hi evayam labdhva anandi bhavati. When one understands the personality of Godhead, the reservoir of pleasure Krishna, he actually becomes transcendentally blissful. Finally, <coughs> when one attains actual experience of rasa by hearing Krishna katha, that is when one turns one's face towards Sri Krishna, not otherwise. There are many pleasures in the material world, many pleasures. But as long as one has not directly experienced the pleasure of Krishna Bhakti Ras, one will not be able to turn away from the pleasures of the material world. It is simply not possible. Yesterday the verse was being quoted. Vishaya vinivartante niraharasya dehina <coughs> rasavarjam rasopyasya param drishtva nivartate. Krishna uses the term rasa twice in that verse. Rasavarjam Rasopyasya Param Drishtvani Vartate. It is very important to have an experience of a higher taste or Param Rasa. Having that taste, one will never ever turn back to this particular material world. So, dear devotees, this is what I would like to say. You know, this is how Swayam Bhuva Manu also got attached to the name, form, qualities, and pastimes. Krishna Bhakti Ras is ever new. Not a single day. We will have where the experience will become old and stagnated. Krishna Bhakti new, Krishna Bhakti Ras is perpetually new, always fresh, always youthful. So, dear devotees, with that, I will pause my speech here. Uh, do we have some time for question and answers? Yes? Okay. Thank you very much. Jagat Guru Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. <coughs> Thank you, Prabhu. Uh, my question is the emphasis about the, in that verse that Satam Prasangam Avavirya Sambido, the sadhu is like comes in, in, in mind right away, then the Shastra. So, Shastra is like the key point to ensemble together, you know, sadhu. And, so, my question will be in the case of a Two great devotees caught in Shastra, but at the same time they, diff they have different opinion. And then the, those who, like let's say in our case, we are in the middle just to see who is right, who is wrong, and what to follow, what to do. Can you explain the, the attitude and the behavior? Of, so yes. Shastra is like the topmost. So if there are two pure devotees and they are differing on a particular point of Shastra. What should be the attitude of a devotee who is observing both these great devotees? So, Srila Prabhupada specified this in one of his letters. I will quote this letter. In a letter to Upendra 19th February 1972, Prabhupada says, as far as your question about Shantaras and the opinions of Rupa Goswami and Sridhar Swami. I don't remember. You can send me the appropriate passages. There is no reason why Acharyas cannot differ on certain points. So, here is where Srila Prabhupada in a letter very clearly says that there may be certain places where two Acharyas may differ on certain points. What should we do when we come across such an incident where two Acharyas are differing on a certain point? So, in Lagu Bhagavata Amritam, Sri Rupa Goswami specifies something which is a harmonizing principle between two Acharyas who differ on certain points. I will quote the verse from Lagu Bhagavata Amritam and I will explain the verse. This is the verse. I will highlight, zoom it out and then I will show the verse. Virodho vakya yor yatra na apramanyam tadishyate yatha viruddhata chasya tathartha kalpyate tayo. Rupa Goswami is saying in Lagu Bhagavata Amritam, Virodho vakya yor yatra, where there is virodha, there is a difference of opinion amongst two statements. Na apramanyam tadishyate. Don't reject one statement on the strength of another statement. 
because many times what individuals do is i like this acharya so i will accept his statement and reject the other acharya statement both acharyas are from the same parampara by rejecting any one acharya we are rejecting the entire parampara it's not that if we reject the acharya who's further away from us we are not rejecting the parampara by rejecting any acharya we are rejecting the parampara so na apramanyam tadishyate do not reject any statement but yatha aviruddhata cha syat try to find a harmonizing principle between both of them tatha artha and that meaning kalpyate tay should be understood which harmonizes both principles so this is one way of reconciling let's say sometimes it is not possible to reconcile two statement they are so opposite that it is not possible to reconcile two statements <coughs> i will give an example of such a difference of opinion between two acharyas shri lajiva goswami and shri lavishwanath chakravarti thakur shri lajiva goswami and in the 37th limb of bhakti in bhakti rasamrit sindhu naivedyam aswaddo eating prasad this is 37th of the 64 limbs of bhakti shri jiva goswami says pura anta puram parityajy do not eat in front of the lord do not eat prasad in front of the lord this is jiva goswami's very clear statement vishwanath chakravarti thakur says bhagavad agre tambul uccharvanam eva nishiddham na tu bhojana samanyam you are only forbidden from eating pan betel nut betel nut leaf you are not forbidden from eating other prasad you can eat other prasad in front of the lord is a direct contradiction between two acharyas jiva goswami says you should never eat anything in front of bhagwan even if it is prasad vishwana chakravarti thakur says you can eat prasad but don't eat betel nut leaf previously the grihasthas used to eat betel nut leaf before bhakti sidan saraswati thakur stopped it for everybody so vishwana chakravarti thakur says you should not eat betel nut leaf other prasad you can eat now this is a difference of opinion which cannot be resolved what to do in this shila baldev vidya bhushan commenting on it says yatha udit anudit hom abhidhayin or vakya yo in vedas there are often contradictory statements one veda says offer fire sacrifice in the morning after sunrise another veda says offer fire sacrifice before sunrise which veda will you follow so the answer is you will follow any one of them hmm? are, while keeping complete respect for the other if you follow any one while having respect for the other the negative effects of the other will not come to you this is called udit anudit hom nyay so you may follow either jiva goswami or shri vishwanath chakravarti thakur while keeping complete respect for the one whom you are not following and the negative effects of not following one particular acharya will not come to you this is called udit anudit hom nyay this is how statements are reconciled so that is it's a very deep philosophy because godiya vaishnav is my goodness it's not child's play when you get into the actual details of uh, godiya vaishnavism and the actual resolution of difficulties and uh, contradictions the acharyas have given it down to the smallest level of detail how to resolve everything everything has been specified but we need to understand the process in great detail so i hope that answers your query to sir yes it does thank you yes prabhu just to add something to this discussion at least stick with me sorry just to add something to this discussion there are a few purports in uh, in, in the bhagavatam where prabhupad <laughs> deals with this he there are con, you know contradicting statements by acharyas prabhupad just presents both of them right. and he doesn't take a side right especially i think as one at least one or two in the fifth canto you probably right. familiar with those papa just presents such and such acharya said this yes and such and such acharya said that and that's it and he yes. just leaves it at that yes wonderful when it comes to philosophy you can present both opinions but when it comes to something related to practice you have to select a side let's say the question of eating prasad should we eat in front of the dt or should we not eat in front of the dt somebody may have some particular center is con center may have a very small temple and devotees may gather on a sunday there no no separate room for prasadam so what do they do they have no choice but to align with shri lavishwana chakravarti thakur's understanding you can eat prasad in front of the deities but you know you can close the close the door but still shri jiva goswami statement is whether close the door or not close the door you should never eat in front of the deity so that is what shri jiva goswami is saying shri vishwanath jiva goswami says get out of the place 
and eat somewhere else that is what jiva goswami is saying but vishwanath chakravarti thakur is a little more merciful in this regard so you in some practical situations you have to take sides with one of the acharyas while keeping complete respect for the other acharya so thank you prabhu ji for bringing up this point yes yes and yes prabhu <coughs> hari krishna uh, my question is um if uh according with what you said in a class and is in a shastra if prema bhakti devotee topmost devotee is not physically present and according what you said in class is this is the best solution and he is present and you have contact with him so what should we do if he is not uh, we cannot find him generally you said is always present somewhere but somehow you know uh, I am somebody else they don't have contact with him for sure I do if a pure devotee is present somewhere and we have immediate access to that pure devotee then that pure devotee is our one stop solution for everything but in case we do not have direct access to a pure devotee what do we do then the teachings of the previous great acharyas and combined with that we will have to take help from multiple gurus at this point of time the bhagavatam specifies this principle uh, 11 931 na hi akasmat gurur gyanam susthiram syat supushkalam ब्रह्म वै गीयते बहुधर्षि ऑल दो दबसेल्यूट श्रूथ इज वन विदउट अ सेकेंड देजेस हैव डिस्क्राइब्ड हिम इन मेनी डिफरेंट वेज देर फोर वन मे नॉट बी एबल टू अक्वायर वेरी फर्म और कंप्लीट नॉलेज फ्रॉम वन स्पिरिचुअल मास्टर द भागवतम वेरी क्लियरली सेज दैट दिस एस्पेशली द आचार्य स्पेसिफाई दैट दिस इज फॉर इन द केस वेन यू डोंट हैव अ प्योर डिबोटी अवेलेबल विथ यू then you have to take help from multiple personalities in order to arrive at the conclusions but still there is a risk here if the people whom we take help from have motivations besides pure bhakti then we may get entangled in those motivations therefore the highest benefit is always attained by taking shelter of an uttam adhikari therefore shri prabhupada also says in the purport to nectar of instruction that although the kanishth and madhyam adhikari can also guide the disciple but that is an insufficient guidance the disciple is always advised to take shelter of an uttam adhikari devotee of the lord and only after having an uttam adhikari devotee of the lord does the disciple get the full benefit from a single source so i will specify that purport also see here in Shila Prabhupad comments in this verse Rupa Goswami advises the devotee to be intelligent enough to distinguish between kanishth adhikari madhyam adhikari and uttam adhikari a neophyte vaishnav or a vaishnav situated on the intermediate platform can also accept disciples but such disciples must be on the same platform and it should be understood that they cannot advance very well toward the ultimate goal of life under his insufficient guidance therefore a disciple should be careful to accept an uttam adhikari as a spiritual master so this is very clearly the verdict of shila prabhupada it is his own words given in nectar of instruction fifth verse purport so we should always make an attempt to find an uttam adhikari and they are always present on the surface of the earth the process of krishna bhakti is always producing uttam adhikaris it has the potency to produce uttam adhikaris thank you yes prabhu acharya narottam prabhu Hare Krishna Prabhu thank you for a wonderful lecture Prabhu in in some of your lectures uh, I heard that um you emphasize the the point of developing the right attitude you know like in the characteristics of devotional service to Durlaba you mentioned that Rupa Goswami explains that there is two things to have the right attitude and then Krishna's willingness to so how to develop that the right attitude how to deep dive into that concept and to really grab the you knowledge to understand that see the right attitude is 
that i will follow the path shown by the previous acharyas and the gurujanas i will not try to carve a new path there are 64 limbs of bhakti and the fourth limb of bhakti is called sadhu vartmanu vartanam following the path which has been carved by the previous sadhus the path has worked perfectly in the past it will work perfectly even today but some people say why should i do that i have something more special with me and then rupa goswami says why are you trying to do this samrigya shreya sam hetu pantha santap varjina anavapta shramam purve yena santap pratasthire rupa goswami quotes in bhakti rasamrit sindhu without any effort the previous sadhus have walked and attained success why do we want to create a new path therefore the right attitude is that whatever path has been followed by the great sadhus in the past i will simply observe that path and follow that path exactly as it was followed i don't have to try to distinguish myself on this path most people want to distinguish themselves on the path that you know i am special on the path because i did something which nobody else did in the past this is incorrect this attitude is incorrect the correct attitude is everything has already been done by the authorities in the past i only have to follow the path which they have shown and where, where is that path shown that path is shown in the shastra the correct attitude is to follow exactly what is given in the shastra instead of saying but but it is 21st century now shastra has to say no sir it doesn't have to change shastra will not change for 21st century 22nd century or any century shastra will remain same for all the centuries but if somebody thinks that shastra has to change for the current time place and circumstance that is where the attitude goes wrong yes about chanting previous acharyas from what i can understand recommended that one chant 64 rounds even bhakti siddhanta was requesting that from his disciples bhakti vinod thakur was chanting 64 rounds um even while he was a magistrate and when he retired i think he increased it to like 128 or something like that um or maybe even more and then this apparently there's an instruction from lord chaitanya oh and bhakti siddhanta gave this instruction as one of his final instructions to his disciples that they should chant a lack of rounds because lord chaitanya doesn't accept the offerings from somebody who's not a lakeshvara so you know prapad initially when after the first initiation he asked the devotees the few that he initiated the chant 64 rounds they told him impossible he said 32 they said impossible he said 16 no less so what should we be thinking you know should we be thinking that we're supposed to be come to the standard of cuz but then prapad you know it's not like prapad talked about it afterwards very much or at all i mean like you know papa talked about book distribution consistently right throughout the whole 10 12 years he was preaching but i you know i listen to papa's lectures regularly daily and i don't hear him saying well chant more chant more you know i mean yet yeah, increase but should we be thinking that we have to chant 64 rounds is that a wish you know yeah yeah you get the idea so it is often specified that in the godia math everybody used to chant 64 rounds this is true and at the same time not true the full time members of the godia math were expected to chant 64 rounds initiation in the godia math would also happen at four rounds so many of the disciples of shila bhakti siddhan saraswati thakur have said very clearly that on four rounds initiation used to be given and uh, <clears throat> many times god brothers of shila prabhupad a question was asked to a god brother of shila prabhupad shila bhakti rakshak shridhar maharaj how many rounds did your guru maharaj ask his initiated disciples to chant every day did he prescribe any set number he replies his general recommendation was to chant 25000 names 16 rounds daily or at least 4 rounds minimum 
when someone had no work he would chant 100000 names for 64 rounds so this where, 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 that's, where did you just i can't see the reference is that this is from his book shri krishna reality the beautiful uh huh the author is shri bhakti rakshak shridhar maharaj shri oh. prabhupada's god brother okay he was asked a question about his guru maharaj shri bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur and he replies by saying that yes those who were full time members they used to chant 64 rounds but those who were not full time members they would begin by chanting one granthi or four rounds of hari naam so this is the first thing that needs to be clarified when shri la prabhupada started the movement everybody was a full timer there were rarely any householders everybody was full time so shri la prabhupada put the same condition that his guru maharaj put on the full time members that you should chant 64 rounds but when it was not possible because there was so much seva so prabhupada reduced it to 16 rounds shila bhakti siddhant saraswati thakur also reduced it to 16 rounds sometimes even to four rounds so sometimes initiation was also given on four rounds to those who were very busy in their householder life there is no fixed number of rounds in gaudiya vaishnavism per se in the tradition hari bhakti vilas or any literature does not specify any fixed number of rounds there are statements in the chaitanya charitamrit which says that chaitanya mahaprabhu will not eat at somebody's home if they do not chant 1 lakh names but this is not the only condition another condition is chaitanya mahaprabhu will not eat at somebody's home if they are not a brahmana that condition is often neglected chaitanya mahaprabhu would only eat at somebody's home if they were born in a brahmin family that was the first condition that chaitanya mahaprabhu used to follow the second condition is that chaitanya mahaprabhu used to eat at their home if they would chant 1 lakh names but if we are not chanting 1 lakh names what do we do the answer to that is because we do not directly offer to chaitanya mahaprabhu we offer to chaitanya mahaprabhu through shri prabhupada shri bhakti sidan saraswati thakur shri bhakti vinod thakur shri jagannath das baba ji shri hari das thakur who are all chanting 1 lakh names daily in our altar there are individuals there are personalities who are chanting more than 3 lakhs daily so therefore we have confidence that because we are not directly offering to chaitanya mahaprabhu but offering through the guru parampara therefore we do not need to take the headache of ourselves becoming a lakshyeshwar before having the confidence that chaitanya mahaprabhu has accepted our offerings we should do what our guru has advised if our guru has told us 16 rounds then 16 rounds is what we should chant if our guru has told us 64 rounds 64 rounds is what we should chant and if our guru has told us four rounds then we should chant four rounds whatever our guru has told us so shila prabhupada often said this um, there is one particular i will i will point this out um, I will try to find out where. Uh, yes, uh, Prabhu, can you see on the screen? Yes, Prabhu, can you kindly? Uh, I will. This is the paragraph. Yes, Prabhupad says in a lecture, we have to practice because Goswamis they kept a number, a numerical strength. Haridas Thakur kept the biggest. Others they also kept, but not so big. but according because just like rupa goswami he had to write so many books so he was not keeping such a big number as 3 lakhs but there was some numerical similarly we must have some numerical strength and we have minimized i know that you are coming from a different source so according to time according to circumstances even there is no limit you can chant more than 16 1600 times there is no but practically we see that even chanting 16 rounds becomes difficult so don't try to imitate but do it properly what is advised by your spiritual master without any offense that mantra will save you from the dangers of maya that's a fact so this is shila prabhupad very clearly saying whatever the guru has advised we should try to follow and different gurus have given different number of rounds in the gaudiya math it began not with 64 rounds dear devotees how many rounds did it begin with in gaudiya math four rounds and for the full time members how many rounds was it 
64 runs so that is what it is okay so should we pause here i think we are beyond time hmm? thank you shila prabhupad ki jai nidai gaur premanande